Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 187. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, we have a new digger, Happy Kitty, who's dug up DOS games backslash board backslash TomToy P3. Okay, clearly have some Tommy's Toys stuff here. 27 files. Yep, a whole bunch of games, just as expected. I'm not going to go through every single one of these, so let's just pick a couple or three here. Um, and yeah, so one of these days I'll do a, like a proper Tommy's Toys run through ancient DOS games or something. But for now, we can just take a look at some of these. Uh, I'm actually not sure which one to run first. I right, got something called Jammer. I wonder what that does. Tommy's Jammer. Apparently this one was from 86. Ooh, I better turn the cycles count down. <laughs> 86 means it would have been a really slow computer at the time. Okay, so apparently there's a racer and a jammer. Space to start. Okay, what's going on? <laughs> Um, it's making a grid of some... Oh, I think I know what this is going to be. Because I think I have an Atari... Yep, is ex <laughs> Okay, the funny thing is, is that it took me a moment to figure out what I was doing there. But yeah, I recognize this completely because I actually have this game on the Atari 2600. Although I don't remember the name of it on the 2600. Okay, so this time I'll try to actually control it properly. Basically the idea is you're trying to collect all the diamonds, but you can only change lanes at the openings. Although... Uh, arrow keys didn't do anything. Okay, there's the instructions. So how do I actually control this? Oh, you have to use the numeric keypad. You can't use the arrow keys. Okay. Wait, how did I not get hit there? Oh, I can actually control my speed, too. Okay, now I'm actually making some progress here. Whoops. <laughs> Was making some progress. Actually, to be honest, I'm very terrible at... <laughs> I'm very terrible at this game, even on the 2600, where it's actually perfectly smooth and everything. Okay, let me out of here. I want to go play something different. How much we play next? Um... We got a bugs. <laughs> um... I guess I can do the bugs one. Bugs! With an exclamation mark. The Great Bug Hunt. Oh, it's just a it's just a bu uh, thing telling you how to report bugs and stuff. Okay, so that's not actually a game. Um, well, why don't we do icicles then? Tommy's Icicles, another one from '86. Interesting text mode icicle effect. Uh, difficulty one, because I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, instructions. You're in a frigid cave holding a hose which shoots ice cubes. <laughs> okay. When a cube hits the wall or another cube, it imme immediately freezes solid to it. When you move using the four arrow keys on the numeric keypad, so once again, numeric keypad but not the arrow keys, the hose points in the opposite direction to your movement. Water spray also causes sharp pointy icicles to grow random for the Okay, I see what's going on here. So basically, you move around this sort of cave, and whatever direction you're moving in causes icicles to start to form, and then you basically just have to not touch the icicles that you're forming for as long as you can. Okay, so kind of an interesting thing. So I think the trick here would be to just, um... Keep your position well, because I mean, I can just sort of bring the icicles in like that. 
And then they're only sort of expanding from wherever wherever my position is. So yeah, this isn't actually too bad. Although I don't think I'm gonna spend the entire time <laughs> playing this because this is gonna take a while to get a full score. So let's just um let's just get let's just get pincered by a spike here. There you go. Oh wait, what the heck? <laughs> it altered the text cursor. <laughs> so yeah, fun fun fact. Not a lot of people know this, but you can actually alter the text cur the text mode cursor. So you can ha basically change like how big it is and where where the start and stop of it is in terms of the box shape. Not a lot of people know you can do that. But um uh, let's do one more here. One arm is just going to be a slot machine. I'm not going to play that. Um, there's a roulette one. Well, that would be pretty basic. Yahtzee, we kind of know what Yahtzee's going to be. We got Meteors and Hyper. Funny thing is, I think I know what Meteors is. Let's see if I'm right about this. So, Tommy's Meteors, another one from 86. Okay, we can already access the instructions, so that's good. So use the arrow keys and the numeric keypad to move. Try to avoid meteors while gobbling up active, mostly recently laid type barriers for points. Striving, of course, to be elsewhere when the countdown reaches zero and new barriers are laid down. Uh, at least we got some um, extra lives here, so it's not one hit dead. But yeah, let's see if we can play this. Whoa. Okay, so this is not what I thought it would be. So the idea is, is you're basically mo moving through. <laughs> you're moving through these barriers. Oh, and I can actually um. Well, that's interesting. So the the meteors that are already there don't hurt. Oops. So yeah, this is a bit chaotic here, but it seems like the basic idea is. Just don't be in the barrier section. Although, how do you dodge anything? <laughs> that was that was actually a little um a little erratic, I guess. You can't really predict when those um, meteors are gonna hit you because they don't always come all the way down. Yeah, this is just very very erratic. There's not really much strategy. Just. Do what you can to survive, and just hope for the best score you can. And of course, just like every Tommy's Toys game, there's actually a demo mode, so my hands are off the keyboard right now. It's playing itself. So yeah, those are just a few more Tommy's Toys games. As I've said before, one of these days I'll cover, like, I'll actually cover a whole bunch of these on Ancient DOS games. Like, do like a full special on Tommy's Toys or something. I wouldn't be able to cover all of them because I think there's like 150 or 200 games. <laughs> Yeah, Tommy's Toys was pretty prolific, and it was all simple stuff like this, with a really high degree of imagination for text mode, given when this stuff came out, but it is otherwise very simple, so one of these days. Next up, we have a team dig from Ben Gemmett and Sane of Streets, win games backslash puzzle 2 backslash Klotsky. If I'm remembering correctly, I think I covered Klotsky on the episode 50 of Ancient DOS games when I was going through, or not episode 50, no, it was the, um, I think it was when I was doing, covering all the Windows games that, all, all the Windows 3.1 games that I was familiar with. And I think this is that same game. Yeah, this is that same game, but you know, it's been a while and maybe not everybody's watched that particular episode or particular filler video. Plus, it'd be interesting to see if this is, like, the exact same thing, although I think it is. Um, what's the help say here? So, this is version 1.0 by ZH Computer Group. And... I actually forget what the, um... I mean, I don't think this is, like... This is, like, a shareware version or something like that. I think this actually got, like, ripped from, like, an entertainment pack or something. Because as you can see, there's nothing in here about registration or anything like that. Um, and we do have a readme file here. Although it's just doesn't have a text <laughs> extension to it, so... Hmm. So yeah, like there's nothing in here about this being shareware or 
anything like or freeware or anything like that. So I think this was part of some larger package. It just got put on this put on this shareware CD for some reason. But yeah, basic idea of Klotsky is well, you've probably seen games like this before, where you're basically just trying to get the red block out and into the particular tiles. And this, these um, cyan colored things can't be destroyed until the red until the red block here has touched all of it. So the way we do that is we just drag these pieces around. It's actually kind of interesting that this particular style of puzzle hasn't sort of gotten, it hasn't really been as popular as certain other ones. I mean, I understand why, because you're basically just doing the same thing over and over again to try and get these, to try and get these pieces out. But, you know, the yeah, funny thing is, I used to be better at this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not doing so well right now. Wait, wait, I think I'm making progress. I think I'm making progress. There we go. Right like that, and then you pull the, the barrier away, move it right on top. So yeah, that's basically how Klotsky works. You just, you have your board, you got your pieces that you move, and there's more complicated levels like this one. But yeah, as I said before, I think I've covered it in more detail on my window, my Windows 3.1 games filler video. So at least I think I did. I might be wrong, but in any case, fun little thing. Next up, we have a failed dig from Jonathan Gosselin, wingames backslash newwin backslash w underscore o hack. And this one failed for a reason that might not be permanent. Well, it's saying here, this version of hack has only been modified to run under win1. I don't know what win1 is. Hmm. So the question is, is this going to even work pro properly? No, it says it needs to find something, but I don't know what that something is. Yeah, it says here that Win1 is a command shell for Windows 3.1 and you need it to run hack. So, yeah, I can't really cover this game right now. So this will be a failed dig for the moment, but this is definitely something that we might be able to recover. So I keep it, keep it set aside just in case. Jonathan Gosselin's successful dig is win games backslash og backslash clots. This is going to be Klotsky again, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, there's that one battleship game that was on this CD like three to freaking times. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, okay, maybe this isn't the same thing. Because we've got clots20.dat file. Going to read me in a write file. Klotz and Funef? <laughs> or Funef? I'm not quite sure. Um, Klotz is a game of falling pieces similar to Tetris for use under Microsoft Windows. Okay, so this is not Klotzky. <laughs> um, why yet another version of Tetris? First reason simply was the wish to have my very own version of this game, as everyone else seems to have. Ain't that the truth? A lot of people were making Tetris clones back then. Um, okay, so the, the author is German. I had a f funny feeling about that. Or just simply what lives in Germany. Um, where's the author's name? That would give us a pretty good idea. Wolfgang Straubel. That definitely sounds like a German name. <laughs> so, let's see here. Interesting. You don't see a lot of early Tetris games that have both drop commands, both the single line drop and the instant drop. Hmm. Wait, park? Temporarily hold peace? Are we talking about a Tetris clone that has the that has the ability to hold pieces? Made when? This is a file date of November 11th, 1990. 
Like, if this is a Tetris game with a hold piece function that early, then that's pretty impressive, because most of the people making Tetris clones did not implement those advanced features only seen in the arcade versions of the game. Actually, come to think of it, I wonder if the arcade versions even had these features at first. Because I know, I know Tetris eventually put it... Put, eventually implemented all of those like extra features like the different drop speeds and the ability to hold pieces and everything but i don't know when it did that because a lot of the innovations that came to tetris first appeared in the arcade versions of the game and i never really played the arcade versions of tetris so i have no idea oh i see what's going on so the extra version of the game adds more pieces to it that have like five blocks on them instead of four. And then apparently this one's being sold for $20. So let's actually see how this works out. So back into the file manager here, clots. Oh, that just started going like right away. <laughs> um, let me clear my windows out of the background for a bit here. Um, Oh, we got different backgrounds we can choose from. And basically, these color gradients got some interesting dithering going on with them. I might as well just go with this one. Um, I noticed that it's got a resizable border, but it doesn't actually let us resize it. Oh, we can make it smaller. Okay, so you can basically adjust its... Um, that's kind of cool. You can adjust how big it is. Um, so we've got our little window there to show us what's coming in what order. We've got a statistics thing over here. Um, there is sound, apparently. Oh, there's a sound. Grid mode? Okay, if we want to see like the grid in the background. Okay, so I guess we might as well um, start over and actually play this. How do we start to go start over again? Is there a way to start over again? Do we just have to lose and... Yeah, I guess we just have to lose. So, what were the controls again? There it goes. Okay, so let's play this properly now. Um, so what's the whole park key again? Well, apparently not that one. Ah, that's the, um... That key adjusts the, um, next window there. Oh! Um, something I just noticed, you actually have to have the proper window here in, um... Oh! That's what the park key does. Okay, that's a very weird feature. So what it does is it hold... Like, when you're... When you got a piece dropping here, hitting the park key causes it to stop in place gives you your next piece and then starts that piece up again so if we like let's see if we like park a p ah <laughs> i'm getting my controls mixed up here oh gee I, I somehow i accidentally increased the speed too i am not used to these controls at all these are very weird controls so yeah if we park the piece there can we like park another one we can. So you can basically park as many pieces as you want. But what if we end up... Will that fall now? No, it won't. So parking is basically a way to just get a piece to stay put? That's so weird. And yeah, it looks like the the variant that had multiple different kinds of pieces is not... um. Whoops, I accidentally put the speed up again. <laughs> The variant that had the, the pentominoes as opposed to just the tetrominoes is um not this game. It's apparently a different game entirely. So so I'm just trying to see if I can recover this at all. Like I mean it's gonna be tricky, but not impossible. So yeah, the hold piece function wasn't the wasn't what I was expecting. But it wasn't it was different, I'll give it that. But yeah, otherwise this is playing pretty much like Tetris. Because that's what it is. <laughs> hey, what else do you expect? And yeah, I was able to recover that a bit.